Hello everyone, and welcome back to Occult Perspectives. Tyler Smith, your host here. So I kind of wanted to change things a little bit for this video. Switch up the, you know, from the normal routine. And um, basically just chat. I know I don't really have enough subscribers yet that a live chat will do much good. Um, we're close to 500 subscribers, so keep pushing for that. If you know people who are like-minded, who are into the occult, you know, who are not immature about this kind of information, please have them subscribe to Occult Perspectives moving the phone just a little bit closer because I know that hearing me has been a problem with a lot of these videos. So there is no particular topic today. Um, today I just wanted to sit down and talk. That's right, talk. Even if I'm just talking to myself, which I know I'm not because I know some of you will see this. And I hope that the things that are discussed in this video will help you as well. Because if, if you're anything like me, and you've been on this path, I've been on this path more or less since about 2014. I started to study spiritual things a little bit before that, so maybe 2013 at the earliest. Um, before that, I was actually not spiritual. I was pretty agnostic. I was into um, Ayn Rand. I've actually covered a little bit of Ayn Rand on this video. Ah, oh, the flies around here. We have to get the rest of the AC units um, out of the windows. Um, we still have some of those in the windows. It's getting too cold, so we need to be able to shut, shut the windows and get the ACs out of there. So it's October, so it's that time. We live in Ohio. It's, it's already getting pretty cold outside. It's, it's pretty cold today. So as I was saying before, if you're anything like me, you've been on this path for a little while now, you don't even really have to follow a specific tradition. I didn't start my practices, my personal practices, until I was, well, I'm not going to try to figure out how old I was at the time. It was 2016, I believe, was when I started keeping logs and keeping journals and and doing ritual, which ritual is something that I do want to discuss in this video. So it's not just all com completely mindless banter from me. Um, so walking this path, there's a lot that comes with it. There's a heightened sense of awareness, a perception that you have that others don't. And we tend to get caught up in the ego thing where we're, maybe we think because we have these superior intellectual or psychic capabilities, we're better. I'm not really the right person to talk to about those kinds of things. Yes, I do believe everyone is equal by natural law. I do believe that everyone has the same rights under natural law. And the law is pretty easy. There's only natural law. Mankind has seemed to have made up a lot of these so-called man's laws because mankind's not able to follow natural law. And a lot of these man's laws are in opposition to natural law too. So some of, this, some of them are to kind of tame us for our own good, in my opinion. And then others are are more hindering us from the natural path, the natural flow. So it's a mixture of these things. It's never black and white. It's always some kind of gray or, you know, spectrum or a polarity or a degree of existence. It's not just this or that. Uh, if you've ever heard the song Us and Them by Pink Floyd, that's what that song's all about. It's all about separation consciousness duality consciousness 
rather than unity consciousness. But duality has its own benefits. Of course it does. Why else would I be wearing this upside down pentagram with the duality above the unity? Unity divided for the sake of uniting. It divides so that it can come to know itself even greater when it unifies again. Gotta drink those rock stars for the rock star. So this path can seem lonely. This path of mindfulness, esoterica, ceremonial magic, whatever it is that you're into, can definitely feed the ego if the ego is not tamed. That's what I've had to work a lot with lately, is getting back into shadow work. Now, I don't know any actual practices that are considered shadow work practices. That's just something I hear a lot of new age people talk about. But true shadow work would really be facing your own demons, in my opinion, and not lying to yourself. Does this mean actually working with the Goetia and the 72 demons of Solomon? I don't know. I'm not going to attempt to answer that question because that's beyond my personal knowledge. I have covered the Goetia on here before in the Keys of Solomon, and I will in the future. We're going to get into some demon stuff. But as far as practicing that and invoking those entities and ritual and calling upon them for certain things, whether it be favors, knowledge, it seems like there's always some kind of price. But if you want to manifest things in the physical world, it seems to be one of the quickest ways to do so is when you work with those kind of more demonic forces because they are closer to this realm. If you're trying to work, you know, white magic, working with angels, even though the archangels are anxious to work with us and they are ultimately a part of us, same with the demons, the demons are at a density that is more similar to the physical world. So if you're wanting to manifest physical shit, you might want to look up how to work with demons. Now, I'm not saying that you should go do that. I'm not advocating it. But, you know, I think there's some truth to that. Sometimes trying to work with the light in such a dark realm as Malkut right now. This is a weird world. It's a lot of different things going on in this world. A lot of things that don't really even involve you, per se. I know that sounds strange, but I think each soul is going through its own ordeal, its own story. And when our ego tries to get in the way and control things, that's when things can really start to get ugly. so many things I've discussed already and I don't even know how to really go about getting into these different topics oh oh my no notes for this so I'm basically just going to go with the flow and I'm probably going to jump back and forth a lot uh, because I tend to do that in my videos if I don't have notes you know keeping me you know reminding me of where I'm at in the video I do tend to get sidetracked. So I'm trying to think of what a good thing to start with would be. For me, personally, I've been working through a lot of my more baser or carnal passions. It's been, a, it's been something that I had pushed aside for so long. This is something I wanted to say. So, I was talking to a shaman friend about using the LBRP and other magical techniques to basically take control of my environment. 
to set that peace and tranquility so that I can, you know, sit in that energy. Anything that doesn't get absorbed back into my own aura, I will give to source. And it also helps the immediate space around me. But what I was finding when I was doing a lot of magic, especially getting into heavier stuff, not heavier stuff, but adding more on, you know, you start adding the LVX on. Usually LBRP and middle pillar is the minimum that I try to do on days that I do ritual. Um, and I don't do ritual every day. And I'm about to get into the reason why, the reason for that. Um, when I started adding like the, on top of the LBRP and middle pillar, the LVX, especially the lesser banishing ritual of the hexagram, and I've only done the Rose Cross a few times. I have done a video on the Rose Cross, but I've only read a lot about it, tried to cover the information, and tried to teach it as best as I could, but I am not, I am not someone who is adept in that at all. The LBRP, yes. I can do the LBRP without moving around. I can do it in my mind very quickly if I have to. In most cases where that, you know, where that would be the case, it might be better to just call upon the archangels very quickly and just envision those four pentagrams around you. But normally I'll try to envision myself going around in the astral and um, formulating the pentagrams. But anyway, what I was getting to is that I was, as I was adding to my practices and my curriculum was getting longer, so instead of spending, you know, the usual 15 to 20, 25 minutes tops a day, that's... And I'm not talking about the meditation that I... Usually after I would do an LBRP, I will sit there with the energy and meditate for a while and just kind of let my mind go or stay in the astral temple that I built with the archangels and the geometric forms, the Merkaba, you know, that is protecting my body, protecting, you know, everything. Basically a, a protection for the soul, armor for the soul spiritual armor so when you're in the, the abyss when you're in the void you have something there you're not just recycled into everything else there's still a part of you that remains that you've built up over this lifetime so anyway my curriculum was going my curriculum aside from normal meditation that i would meditate once the inner once the space is cleared so straight up practices, 20 minutes is probably about about average for like an LVRP and a middle pillar. I also do the relaxation ritual beforehand. I used to do tarot cards every day too, like a tarot contemplation. I don't really do that anymore. The tarot cards are, they're really powerful tools. And a lot of the times I, I find that the cards just validate what you already know. That's what it's ten, tended to have done for me lately and I also haven't done any divinations because I don't want to rely on the cards I need to start figuring things out for myself and that gets us back into what we were just talking about my curriculum went from about 20 minutes to about 40 45 minutes so it was almost twice as long because it would be relaxation ritual LBRP I also added the LIRP in there lesser invoking ritual the pentagram LVX Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Hexagram, LVX again, well, no, Middle Pillar, or yeah, LVX again, I think Middle Pillar would end it, um, yeah, so it added a lot more, it added a lot more, it's the more time, more energy that you build up, and I was also doing an advanced version of the Middle Pillar where you imagine all the Archangels on the Sephiroth, on your body, so it's not just the and then the two below you're also having all the other Sephiroth so Kether, Kokma, Vina, um, Da'at, Light Purple, Zodkael, you know Hesed, um, Gabura, all of that on your body what I found is that my energy was getting so intensified, so crazy that um, 
I don't know if any of you deal with this. I'm hoping I get some comments on this from some fellow practitioners. When you build up your energy that much, it's hard to always find an outlet for that energy. If you can't just stay in the room and meditate and be working on a project or something, when you go back into the world, I get this a similar feeling when I leave Lodge for the night. You know, the energies are all clean. It's very pristine. Same with when you do, you know, ceremonial magic. You do the LBRP. Um, you go back into the world and it's hard to maintain that cleanliness and that, the beauty essentially. For me it is anyway, because of the lower vibrations of everything around. When you become strong enough in your practices though, your force, for, your force field will be so powerful that nothing else can really mess with you. So yes, it's, um, when you go and, you know, when you go out into the world again, you do feel these protective forces around you. You know, you've invoked the archangels. But over time, it just seems like where you're such a purpose-driven person, which I'm sure most of you are, you have objectives, you have things you wish to fulfill, you have things you do for fun, you have things you do to get your mind off of things. There's a flow about it. And when you go back into your quote unquote normal life or whatever, and you have to deal with the world, I'm not gonna get into details, you know. Sometimes we get so angry we can't control certain things be because of this, we live in a great country. Um, I wouldn't be what I'd call a super patriotic person, but we are fortunate here in America. In any other country that, you know, you don't have to worry about going out in the street and getting shot for what you believe, or countries where you go out, you know, a woman might go out in the street and have to be afraid of getting raped. You know, some of those things happen in some of the, you know, worst societies or, you know, not worst societies, what am I saying? Um, like bad places, like bad cities, you know, maybe some really ghetto, ghetto type areas. Um, but for the most part here in America, you, you're, you're kept safe. You know, you don't have to worry about those kinds of things. And I think as rational beings, you know, magicians or whatever we are, it's hard to go back out into this world. And we know that it could be such, even though it's a, so much better than the rest of the world, we are very fortunate. I am very grateful for the things that have been given to me in my life. The people that have loved me, the love that has been given to me, that is still given to me all the time, I'm so grateful. But at the same time, there's this drive. There's this fire inside of you that knows that things could be even better, that things will be greater. And you almost feel that you're ready, your spirit is ready and alive. It's burning like a flaming, your soul's on fire in a good way. You have all this energy and you've built up all this energy through your ritual work and stuff. And then you're like, what do I do with it in this world? Why is everybody so lost? Where can I actually apply this energy and this knowledge? For me, I, I'm a writer, I'm working on a book. It's called Freemasonry and Ceremonial Magic. I may read some of it on here um, one day. I'd like to get it published, but it is going to take me a while to write. There's so much material to cover about Freemasonry and just the tradition of magic itself that goes back, you know, Freemasonry comes from old, old traditions. They come from Egyptian and then Sumerian, and then you go back before that. It all comes from Atlantis. Before that, it comes from Lemuria. Before that, more ancient civilizations before that. So no group, no one group or religion or any of these things can claim that the knowledge is quote, quote, theirs. It's just their flavor of it. It's their tradition the way of using that universal divine energy in that way. But the information itself and its primal state doesn't really belong to any one person. 
yet it is the common inheritance of all people. Anyway, I got sidetracked about my book. I don't really want to ramble about my book. I want to talk about some more transformational and, and personal things. And what's odd is it is not letting me check the time. So I honestly have no idea how much time I have left. Oh wait, is there a phone here I can look at? Oh, it's a dead phone then, because nobody uses it. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't want to close this out, because if I close this window out on my phone, I think that it will end the video, and then I'll just be really sad. So I'm just going to keep rolling with this video until um, I'm not, I'm not uh, here alone anymore. I could probably run back to the bedroom, but I'd prefer to just be out here when it's um, peaceful and quiet. Got little ones coming home from school in a little bit, so they like to make some noise sometimes. It's not always the best, the best atmosphere for us occultists. <laughs> and I'm always the one that uh, goes and runs away in my room, like it's my, it's my little cave I have back there. My fiance, she's cancer, so she's all about that home, you know, she's that homebody, homebody energy, all about having people over and stuff. And I do like my select few people over. I do have a, a close tribe, circle of friends, friends that I would pretty much do anything for. And I think they would do the same for me. Um, in fact, I know many of them would. But yeah, we're just, we're pretty different in a lot of ways. Scorpio's tough to deal with. I'm a quadruple Scorpio. Sun, Moon, Mars, and Pluto. And my Mercury is in Sagittarius. So that's why I like to talk and ramble so much in these videos. Ooh, ego's been a, ego's been a big one for me lately, though. While I have been... Oh, before... I'm see I'm so sorry I'm already jumping to something else I wanted to finish up what I was talking about before with having all this energy built up so much it's almost like you can't contain it and you don't know how to properly channel it at least I'm finding difficulty that in this in my life it's like where can I actually put my energy in that will be of best benefit to me me and mankind it's going to help us both. It's going to help me be a more positive person. It's going to help somebody else because they're learning something. This active, stimulating, engaging conversation kind of a thing should be more promoted. Okay, I have 20% battery left. Which is actually more than I thought I would have. So this video will probably be good for at least another 10 minutes. But um, like I said, I'm not sure what time it is anymore. I should have some time left still. So you have all this energy. And especially when I increased my practices, you know, I noticed that I was just having tons and tons of energy. It was making me feel like almost overwhelmed. Now, a lot of people, this is a common question. How often should I perform the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram? Some people say every day. Some people do it like twice a day. Um, Crowley, I think, did it twice a day. Probably along with the lesser invoking ritual of the pentagram. And that was just his, you know, his basic stuff. He was an advanced occultist and had been studying this stuff like his whole life since he was a young, since he was young. He knew, he knew real biblical symbology and stuff from the time he was a kid. He was already learning what was going on. He kind of already knew his dharma in a way that he was to be this dark persona that kind of pushed the edge of a lot of thinking and stuff. And we needed that. We needed somebody to push the boundaries of what's really moral and possible and uh, go beyond those boundaries so that they could be set. So he really did mankind a favor by being this kind of crazy fiend, actually. 
he showed what was done and he showed also what will happen if you try to do too much. So as a fellow occultist, as a fellow ceremonial magician or whatever your tradition is, we're all in this together. It's really all about one world peace. It's about us unifying all our beliefs and stuff into really the most the most efficient way that really helps us spiritually evolve. Bringing the best bits of information from all the traditions and really figuring out the essence of what's being said rather than just all these the flavors and the mythologies and the that stuff's all just like sugar coating, making it fantastical, you know, um, fantasy, fiction. But of course, we know there's more to it than that. Of course, we know there's there's a lot going on. There's a lot of realms of existence. There's a lot of being. So things that are written and about in fiction, yeah, they may not exist here in the physical right now. But there's so many different universes and realms of reality that basically anything's possible and we can channel those influences through this world when we visualize things. Like when we visualize the archangels. So as a fellow, as I was trying to say, as a fellow initiate, as a fellow um, practitioner, take it easy on yourself. Take it easy on yourself. And don't always feel like you have to be this superhuman because what you're going to find end up finding out is that you're just alone on this mountaintop and it's not always the most fun place to be it's like yeah I passed all the tests I've done all the stuff now I'm here on the mountaintop and I'm free I'm free from ego I'm so powerful because I've conserved and built up all this energy but what now what now? Are we, are you, are you to be a hidden master at that point? Are you to just go away and, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, I think there are certain people that are meant to live like a totally yogic lifestyle or herm, hermit lifestyle. That's where hermetic comes from, one of the things hermetic comes from where they spend their whole lives in meditation mode because they're working on different modes of reality. Um, they're not just working in the physical. And a lot of them don't even, a lot of these ascended masters or even physical masters here who haven't, you know, transcended into a non-corporeal form or a non-physical form. I think I'm wording that right. Um a lot of the masters are still physical people on this planet and they're holding the space energetically it's like they're involved in the spiritual warfare through the astral realm they're here in the physical but they're doing so much stuff sometimes they're even doing things in the physical as well so they're going about their day doing things to help people to help community help build a better world and they're simultaneously working in those other realms these are all levels of mastery that are like, these are people who had, who were basically probably initiated into this stuff from when they were very, very young. They were born to do that. That was their dharma. So, if you're watching this YouTube channel, I'm not saying that you can't be that. The question I'm asking is, is that what you really want? Do you want to just be this being of light bathed in the eternal bliss? While it sounds really cool, there is a lot of work to be done here. And I look again to this. We're talking about the physical. Not in a bad way. Not in a bad way. But we're focusing, maybe sometimes we should focus more on the, the quote, real world is I hate when people say that I hate when people say adulting too like yeah I'm adulting like first of all did you know that adult means like dull or boring person so if you're an adult or adult you are a boring person 
by definition. Um, and what most people consider to be an adult, go to work, pay bills, does that have anything to really do with consciousness? Holistic understanding of principles of nature, of how the universe manifests things? No. You could be a complete dumbass and be a so-called adult. I don't think it has any... Being an adult, being 18 years or older has nothing to do with spiritual maturity. Yeah, you do gain some of that as you get older, but I know people who are adults who don't know the first damn thing about anything. They couldn't talk spiritual conversation with me for five minutes, probably not even one minute. And one of them, and it, normally these kind of people don't bother me. The only time they do is when it comes into, they start to come into my lane. I used to have a person who would badger me at work all the time because I'm not working fast enough or I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that. Well, buddy, to put it plain and simply, fuck you, man. And uh, I really feel sorry for when your soul has to go through its awakening process and you have to manifest here as a physical being that knows all these spiritual things and then you're stuck with people who don't understand. Then you'll know what my struggle was. And you'll know how mundane your reality was one day. And I hope that I, in a previous incarnation, was not just one of those annoying people who didn't know anything. It's hard to say. I don't know how it all works. I don't know how many incarnations we've had. I don't claim to know those kinds of answers to things. That's... Um, We can kind of get some information, excuse me, from those other realms. People who, who are complete masters are working in those realms constantly. And I think there is a difference between, you know, people who just believe they're seeing things or they're basically just hallucinating and people who genuinely are working through different realms of existence. But enough about that. See, I've rambled for 32 minutes. It's really not that hard for me to ramble. It seems like I can, I can talk about things for a long time, even if there's nobody else present, which is kind of odd, maybe. <laughs> I'm really just talking to myself, talking into this camera. So yeah, that's, that's been a thing for me, is overcoming ego differences. People are very different from me. They don't take the things that I take seriously. My studies, understanding these things, applying them into my life and trying to transcend the physical realm. No, I'm not saying I hate the physical. The physical has so many awesome, awesome potential things. But here's the thing. If there's no space and no time, here we are. This is infinitude. We could have anything we want right now, anything. And yet the whole world's distracted and looking for something. No, it's right here. It's right here. And if everyone would come to that understanding and stop running around like a bunch of fools, we could see that we already have the things we need. We could... really just create the kind of world we want to rather than being at the effect end of everything we can be the cause we can be the cause this world doesn't have to be hell the world doesn't have to be a hell hole this world's amazing it's just ignorant souls that make this place a harsh place it's pretty annoying it's pretty annoying and to not hate some people is very hard sometimes it's something I've had to work with ego there's an exercise Donald Michael Craig says to do in his book, and he says to try not saying the word I for like two weeks, and that'll help with the ego. That's really difficult, I think, to do. I haven't even attempted to do it yet. I think I tried like one day, and it's really hard to not, to phrase sentences so that you're not using the word I. 
it's really tough because that's how we associate that's how we interact with this physical world is through our vessels our bodies I think uh, sexuality can be a tough thing too sometimes because our bodies have urges but when we look at the higher vantage point of what our soul really wants um, and sometimes we have to be honest with ourselves we have to be honest with ourselves are we seeking to enlighten or are we seeking to dominate are we seeking to let our egos get so far that we get wrapped up in the affairs of people that we shouldn't even really concern ourselves with we should just just don't worry about them Worry about your own personal journey. As Crowley says, there's room for both the worm and the enlightened man or something like that. He talks about two totally different beings, but they both exist here on earth. There's all kinds of life here on earth. So many different journeys taking so many different paths. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really crazy because at the end of the day, it's like we're not in control of any of this really or are we <laughs> I think that's where ceremonial magic is nice because it allows you to take the driver's seat at least a little bit where everyone else is just blown through blown to the wind you know they're just going to and fro not even sitting to think as much as we have sat here in this video and actually thought about things we've sat still here I've sat still here for 36 minutes that's a long time for me to sit still if I'm not in meditation I am water, I am constantly on the move. I've always got this fire inside me, this thing that makes me feel like I've gotta get something done. I'm a drummer too, so my legs are always shaking. You'll sometimes see me, you know, pat my legs. I have an old YouTube music um, channel, so if you wanna check that out, type in Drummer Boy Smith 2010 and it should pop up. Should be one of the there's some other dumb videos like Justin Bieber on the drums, I think, or something that pops up, but um, you should be able to find mine if you type that all in, one word. I've been playing music for a long time now. I've been playing live music for like 12 years at least. Um, so music's kind of one of those things I had so much, I had such a hunger for, but honestly, if I'm going to be completely honest, I love playing music, but for the most part, I'd like to just sit and relax and talk with friends who are of like mind. Find people who are of like mind and just talk. We can meditate, you know? It's, we have everything we need here. Why are we reaching out? Like, sometimes I feel like there's, you know, there's so many things between bills, you know, the job, our muggle jobs, all of these things that from, life that are the constant gavel you know rapping and trying to get our attention and just pulling us to and fro and to and fro when we are these enlightened beings that already understand yet we have a physical body so we can do cool fun stuff and still be solemn and serious about source you know there's there's there is a line with fun i think when it crosses a certain line it's really not something that is sacred anymore. Sometimes I think a lot of people are just grown up children. They're big children. And they just wanna keep playing and it's all about fun. It's all about balance. You no, know, you wanna go off and have one night fun binge or something that's cool I don't care I don't really care what you do I'm not like here to tell you what's right and wrong but I think a person who indulges a lot in something but also pays it back in some way to society or people it's more about giving back it's more about what you give to the world yeah you can 
some people complain because, you know, say somebody's a drinker, for instance. You know, they like to drink alcohol. They like to get drunk. So what? If that person gets drunk every weekend, shit. If they get drunk every day or every other day, but they produce amazing, incredible results in their personal life, which probably isn't going to be the case <laughs> for most people. But everyone needs their thing. You know, everybody's got their, their little tick, their little fetish, their little itch or whatever. And if that's all it takes to allow somebody to do amazing things in this world, then by all means, do it. Do what makes you happy. Don't walk this path if this makes you unhappy, if the occult stuff is... Um, if it's doing to you what it used, what music used to do for me, what music was doing for me, I was going to these shows and playing, but I just didn't have the passion and the soul in it anymore. I was really good at what I do. Yeah, it was cool to see a few people when I go out, but I just, I didn't have a yearning. I was actually getting to the point where it came to play shows, and I'm actually like not really motivated to go. It's like, man, I don't really want to go out. I just want to stay home. I just want to stay home and relax and enjoy the things that I work so hard for, you know? Work so hard for doing mundane things like, you know, a normal job and stuff. And it's not that I hate work. I have also discussed this um, more on my Facebook videos than, um, than here on this YouTube channel. I like work. I could go up right now, and if I really knew that it was benefiting and elevating consciousness of society, I would go and teach somebody on any of the things we talk about on this channel right now. I would go and teach them, because not only would it bring joy to me, you know, that person who's striving to learn that thing, they would get lit up too. You know, it's a light, be a light to the world. If it's a neighbor or a friend that needs help moving something, that's work. That's, that's not work that you get paid for, but it's still the great work. People think work's just, that's why the whole education system, it's income-based education. It's bad, it's bad news. When everything starts being about money, when everything starts being about gold, that's why this world's in the shitter. Because people are selfish and greedy. Not even just a little bit. I mean, I understand wanting to take care of yourself and having a little extra. You know? But we're talking about, like, psychopathic, socio true sociopathic people. Yeah, I might be dark sometimes. I've got a dark side. And I will... Reveal it when it's necessary. But these, some of these people are fucked up. Pardon my French. I try not to curse on here too much. I just don't think it brings good energy into your life when you curse a lot. Especially using any God's name in vain. Or even, my friend always used to joke, I don't think you want to damn the devil either. That ain't gonna bring you any good either. You become what you hate. You become what you hate. And a buddy of mine at work, he, uh, he pointed out a term today. What was it? S spiritual reconstruction. That was the word. Because I told him I was still dealing with a lot of stuff, trying to transmute a lot of things. And um, I'm in a period of my life, you know, I'm, I'm about to be 31 next month. There's been a, it's been a lot of life change for me. Um, I've really had to do a lot of self-reflection and figure out who I am. Because I think in some ways I've forgotten. Or there's parts of me I pushed aside, like I said earlier. And now it's coming back stronger than ever. The demon, the beast, is making itself known to me. And it's because it's a part of me that I, you know, I can't just push aside. I have to really embrace this thing and figure out what it is that brings me the passion and the joy to do 
the work that I'm meant to do on this earth the best that I can. I need, need to be watered, you need to be watered, everyone needs to be watered in their own unique way. But um, I think one more thing before I end this video, it's already been 45 minutes. It's been nice just chatting and not really going over notes or anything. We can do this kind of video more, you know, this video presentation, this style of presentation more, more often if you would like. Um, just let me know. Hopefully I get some cool comments on this. But I'm going to rewind a little bit to where all of the... Um, practices that I was adding and stuff, all this pent-up energy that you get from invoking these angels and stuff, if they don't find their proper outlet where you can manifest, you know, positive change in the world, um, sometimes it's better to lay off, to lay off the LBRP. If you need to take a break, take a break. The only warning is that uh, Freighter Xavier, uh, Mind and Magic, uh, YouTube channel. I believe that's his YouTube channel's name. Mystery School is the name of the series that he started in the beginning, and I think that's still going. Um, the LBRP lights you up on the astral plane. It's like a spotlight. So, and then the Rose Cross is more like a cloak. It'll kind of cover up your energy again. But anyway, um, the LBRP will light you up on the astral realm. So sometimes it's a good idea, if you've taken a break for a long time, you notice some weird things happening, you might want to do the LBRP again. I'm going to go and open this door. Take it back to the room. a little bit longer because I got to finish what I was saying. Anyway, if you need to, take a break. Um, go easy on yourselves. Um, because something that I hadn't thought about for a long time, when we perform an operation, there's usually a time delay before the manifested change comes into being. Um, you know, you, you do the ritual, you put the intention, you wait for that to manifest back in the physical realm, but you have to let go of it, set it and forget it. Now, if you've been doing the LBRP for years, every single day, have you taken time to see how that, all that accumulated energy might manifest for you when you do stop? So I think it's good to sometimes... Just take a breath. That's something we should have done at the beginning of this video. It's a good thing when, to do when we find ourselves angry or worked up. fourfold breath is an amazing technique even just the art of doing the breathing you close your eyes you do that for like a whole minute or two your consciousness is going to change you're going to be in a more relaxed state of being but anyway what i was getting at is if you take a break from the lbrp and all your accumulated practices that you've done for possibly years up to this point i'm not saying you have to take a break i'm just saying if you do it's going to let you see how the energy, think of it as, okay, here's a barrier, and you've done the LBRP, LBRP, you've done all of these exercises for years, and then you take a, instead of like building up the stream, and building it up and building it up, you finally let the energy go. Hmm. Maybe there could be some benefit to that. Maybe it's time to wait and see what magic you have manifested over time. 
maybe. But as I was saying before, after we do our practices and we come back into the normal world, um, and that was something that um, my shaman friend was saying, th you know, this all goes back to this. I was trying to say this earlier in the video. But um, she said, I understand you, you know, protecting yourself from unwanted triggers and stuff, but eventually you're going to have to ease back into the shadow work instead of having this protective armor around you all the time. And that is what I was doing. I was trying to order and control my reality in such a way with this stuff that it all ran smoothly and perfectly. But here's the deal. Here's the catch. It only does that for you. If you are surrounded by people who are not dedicated on that same level, they will drag you down. Sometimes this is not always a bad thing. Sometimes we just need to be humble and be grateful and thankful for the things that we have because there are so many beautiful things in this world. But at the same time, don't let anybody drain your energy. Don't let anybody be a vampire. So yes, I think it's good to take a break from some of these things and to deal with the world with our own natural selves. We're used to putting up all this she these shields, these protections. Maybe take a week or so to see what it's like without those things. And that maybe what your body really needed was just some relaxation from all that. So there is no shame in taking a break. I think for me, I'm so far into this stuff that I could never completely leave it. I don't think for the rest of my life I will probably, because the benefits have just been too great from it. If you can do something and it can take you from not feeling so good, maybe even almost feeling sick in a negative attitude and completely flip that around, and you're only spending 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes tops, that's not very long. That's not very a long por that's not a long portion of your day. You spend like eight hours at work or whatever, probably in constant negative vibrations. So if you can take at least 20 minutes and you do this thing and it flips the switch and it makes you in this higher, puts you into this higher vibrational state where things aren't bothering you as much, I think that's something to hold on to forever. These practices are, are awesome. The things we teach on this channel and that many others teach. Damien Eccles, Foolish Fish, uh, YouTube channel, check him out. There's so many. There's so many t people teaching this stuff out there now. You just got to find it. You just got to find it. And I reference a lot of uh, YouTube channels on my channel because I want to share that information. I'm not trying to be the only one who talks about this stuff. That, that would be lame. Then I would be really alone. <laughs> so yeah, just um, take it easy, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video um, this was just a more of a more of a mellow conversational kind of video and um, you know let's work on being our best selves as much as we can I hope this was like a little pep talk for you um, hopefully knowing that there's someone else out there that feels the same way can help you have the strength to make it through this earth you know this journey on earth a little bit better um, and know that if you feel these same ways about a lot of these things, that you are not alone. You are not alone. For could you even be alone even if you really wanted to be? <laughs> yeah. All right. I think that pretty much covers it. Peace and love to you all. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel if you've subscribed. Um, for being a part of this family. Um, it, means, it means a lot. Um, we're almost to 500 subscribers. That's so exciting. That's so exciting. And um, I hope you and your families and your loved ones are all doing well. And really, at the end of the day, I, ho I hope the best for all. Regardless of how angry or upset I may get that things are not, quote-unquote, the way that they should be yet, 
I get a lot of anger when I know that people have been hurt or bad things have taken place and I was not able to be there to change it. And sometimes I just want to be able to erase reality and change things. And my ego really gets in the way of that. And um, sometimes that makes it challenging and hard for me to really even be close with people. Because people are a lot, letter, a lot better just letting things go than I am sometimes. Even the small things can trip me up. And I gotta run away and do an LBRP. Maybe not this time, you know, maybe just sit there and, and, and think about it and sit with it. Sit with it. Be kind to yourself, too. Don't be too hard on yourselves. I love you all. Peace and blessings, and until next time.